they're actually a great fit for our program. Uh, as we go through the list, you see that there's, uh, we're really excited about the, the athleticism and the, the talent that we have on this list. Um, but more than anything, just the great young men that are adding to the program, to our family. Uh, they're, they're, they came here for the right reasons. And in recruiting, we have a unique style of recruiting that's different than what I think everybody else is doing. And so I think uh, I have to give a lot of credit to our coaches uh, for all the hard work, uh, for A-Rod and Jay and, and the rest of the staff for all their hard work and being on the road. And this isn't just a uh, thing that happened the last couple of weeks. This is recruiting has been uh, for years. And, and uh, these guys have been done an amazing job recruiting. And we've gotten to some battles uh, in recruiting. And I'm glad that we were able to come out with, with a, a great uh, result and in terms of the uh, production that we have in recruiting. And having the, uh, the young men and their families on campus, again, has been a, a, such a valuable asset for us and such a, a game changer that our, um, the retention rate uh, and, and the, 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 those that come on visits, the, the, that commit and sign, it's, it's, it's high as ever. So that's a huge compliment to everybody in being involved. But it wouldn't be able to happen if we weren't uh, locating them with our recruiting department and with our coaches. So that being said, I'm going to go over the, the specialists and, and uh, kind of bring them up. And, and then after that, I'll turn the time over to A-Rod to go over the offense and Jay to go over the defense. Uh, we have our kicker, Brody Laga from Harriman uh, in Mount Ridge High School. An amazing kicker, one of the best in the country. Uh, he, he plans to serve a mission first and then to join us afterwards. Um, he, he, has, uh, he has such great production, but deep field goals and, and kicky field goals. He is long for a 59-60 yarder, and he kicks an a, a incredible amount of field goals that are long. So uh, having a big leg, um, we're excited about him and adding him to the team. We also have a long snapper by the name of Kenneth Skidmore, uh, who's 6'2", 200 from Mesa, Arizona, Red Mountain High School, one of the best snappers in, in the country. Uh, he's been through all the different um, camps and has done a great, a great job. So we're excited to see him uh, have an opportunity to flip the, the field for us and give us an advantage. Those are specialists. I'll turn the time over to A-Rod now. All right. Um, first thing I want to mention is uh, we the, the most important recruiting uh, thing that we did was retain our players. And so as soon as the season ended, you, you know, in this day and age with the portal, you have to really work at retaining our players. And I think we've done a good job of that. We're, uh, everybody pretty much is coming back. We had uh, one guy. Uh, Aiden decided to turn pro, but I've got most of our key players are returning, and we're really excited about all those guys and, and appreciative of the fact that they like being a part of this program. And uh, I think it was a good sign about how our, our team culture is really strong. Uh, as far as recruits go, um, we signed six high school players. I'll start with, with an offensive lineman named Iki Tupo from Palo Alto High School. Uh, Iki is everything you look for in an offensive lineman. He's six foot six. 290 pounds, he's long, athletic, tough, and he's an excellent student. He's a really smart guy. Uh, he's going to be a great fit for our program, and um, I think he's a guy that wouldn't be surprised to see him play early in his career. He has a lot of tools and uh, really excited about him. And then um, court, we signed two quarterbacks, one that's going to go on a mission and one that's going to join us in January. Uh, so I'll start with Noah Lugo is joining us in January. Uh, Noah is from Eaton High School in Texas. Um, He's an elite track athlete. He's one of the fastest hurdlers in the state of Texas, nationally ranked in the hurdles. Um, he can really run, and I'm um, excited to see, see him join us in January. And then uh, Enoch Watson uh, is going to serve a mission. Enoch is from American Leadership Academy in Queen Creek, Arizona. Uh, super athlete, really good passer. Um, played in an offense where he didn't get to throw a lot the first couple years in high school, and, and I think kind of lucky for every, for us. Um, he didn't really get a chance to show what he could do until his senior year. And he put up huge numbers this year, had a great year, and um, he's going to be a great player in this program. We're really excited about him. He'll be serving a mission, and then we'll, we'll get him back in a couple years. Um, we signed a tight end named Reiner Swanson. Uh, 
national recruit, very highly recruited guy. Um, and Reiner's from Laguna Beach High School, uh, 6'4", 235, 240, something like that. Uh, looks great. You can't look better than Reiner does. And we're really excited about him. He's, he's just got an awesome personality, brings a lot of energy to everything he does and um, have really high hopes for him. He's also joining us in January. He will be here, be here shortly. And then we signed two high school wide receivers, one that's going to go on a mission, one that will be here uh, this next fall. And so Tay Nakua, uh, obviously we're excited about anyone with the last name Nakua. Uh, Tay is um, a super really good football player. Wouldn't be surprised at all if he plays early as, as well in his career. Uh, Timpview High School, I think um, it goes without saying that this is a big get to get Tay to join us. Highly recruited player that's really good. And, uh, and then Jet Nelson is going to serve a mission from American Fork High School, um, 6'5", 210 pounds. He's a big guy, got great range, great ball skills, and uh, he'll serve a mission, and we'll see him, see him in a couple of years. But we're excited about him. And, um, and then we're, we still have a few spots open that we'll keep recruiting to, to fill. We're going we're to be very selective with, with those remaining spots that we have. Okay, on the defensive side of the ball, we'll start with one of the best athletes, I believe, in the state of uh, Utah, Carson Suisui. Uh, he played quarterback in high school. Uh, he's an athlete. There's probably a lot of things that this kid can play, but um, if you watch his high school film, he runs around, he throws it great. He's a great athlete, and he's got a big frame. So we're super excited about having him in our program and what he'll be. Uh, Trey Alexander, let me go to the corners next. Uh, Trey Alexander is a corner out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I believe this kid's got a chance to be one of the best I've coached. He's got length, he's got speed, he's got size. We beat multiple ACC schools on him, and he had SEC offers. So to pull him from that side of the country to come out here is a tribute to just what BYU represents and what we can offer. Uh, Jonathan Cabea, a really outstanding athlete out of the Dallas uh, Texas area. Uh, he, he's a kick returner, punt returner, uh, lockdown corner. He was on one of the best teams in, in uh, Texas at Byron Nelson High School. Uh, so we're super excited about those two guys and uh, how they cover. Um, moving on to the defensive ends. This is probably one of the groups that was the biggest for what we just signed. There were so many good defensive ends in the state of Utah this year. Uh, and this was just a, a knockout class. So uh, let's start with Ephraim Asiata. Uh, this is a kid that uh, all three of us have had great relationships with his mom and dad for a long time. Um, phenomenal player, obviously, that we coached at Utah. And, and now we're super excited to have Ephraim down with us. He's, he's a dynamic pass rusher. He's super physical. Um, he's going to do great things early in his career here at BYU. Uh, Siosefa Brown out of Highland High School. He's another one of those guys that's just a phenomenal athlete. He's got great length. We went and watched him play basketball the other day. Phenomenal basketball player. Comes from a great family. Super excited about what he uh, is and what he'll become. Uh, Viliami Puha. Um, phenomenal mom. I don't know about the dad. He, uh, he uh, is a question sometimes, but uh, comes from a great family. Obviously, he's the son of uh, Sione Puha, who coaches our defensive line. but. Uh, Vili is going to be a great player. Uh, he's got size and athleticism that um, I, I know the fans are going to be super excited about. Adney Reed's an interesting one. He played at Spanish Fork, and then his parents uh, went to serve a mission in Australia. So his parents are serving as mission leaders there in Australia. Um, so this recruitment's been a long time coming. It's been across the ocean and uh, a different avenue of getting him here. but. He's going to be a phenomenal player after his mission. Uh, Sani Tuwala, uh, he's a junior college player um, that we got out of Citrus College. He has not played football for a long time, but if you watch his film, super athletic, explosive. And uh, again, he brings that size and physicality that we've been looking for in our defensive front. Uh, DeVoe Tuatanga, uh, we got him out of Cedar Valley High School. A very highly recruited kid going into the spring was one of the highest recruits in the state of Utah. He, he's another one. He's got great size and athleticism. And he's one of those guys, if you go watch play volleyball, you see his athleticism stand out. He can really jump and run. A great player. 
Um, let me just make sure I'm not missing any of the defensive ends because there was a bunch of them. All right, that's them. Okay, moving on to D tackle. We felt like we needed to beef up the interior part of the defensive front. We did that. Uh, we took Dallin Johnson, a local kid out of Springville High School. He's one of the strongest kids maybe in the country for his age group. Um, just a big monster kid inside that's been committed to us for a while. And, and I got to give him a lot of credit. He stayed true to that commitment and, and such a phenomenal kid for that. Uh, Danny Saili, uh, another uh, big time recruit that we had to flip late. He was committed elsewhere and uh, he took a trip out here with his family. They fell in love with the place. Um, it goes back to just that BYU environment and what he's all about. But Danny is a big time guy that um, has great size inside. Luke Toomalatai um, is a junior college kid that we got out of Long Beach City College. Another just big athletic guy inside that will uh, bring instant um, uh, experience because he's played at the JC route and you know size and strength for us. Uh, moving on to linebacker, we got Blake Low. Uh, Blake's going to go on a mission. Um, he already has his mission call right now. He's out of Chaparral High School in California, but. Blake's one of those guys, if you throw on his film, you see him playing mostly safety, but he can do it all. He can play safety, wide out. Um, he's a hitter, and we're going to play him at linebacker. Uh, we really believe he's going to be big and, and uh, has phenomenal film. Uh, Jack Kelly's a, a player that I know very well. I coached him when I was at Weber State. Last year, he had 10 and a half sacks at Weber State and really one of the dynamic FCS players in the country. We're lucky to get him. He was highly recruited. And um, it's, it's fun to have him back with us. And, and I know what he can do. I've seen him up close in person. Uh, moving on to safety with me, we got uh, Matthias Leach. Uh, I believe he's one of the better athletes in the state of Texas. Uh, as a sophomore, he jumped over six foot eight in the high jump. Uh, he's uh, one of those guys that I believe the sky's the limit on his athleticism and his potential. He's a ball hawk. And he's a long levered, rangy free safety that we need in this program. Uh, the same thing with Tommy Prassus. Uh, he was one of the leaders in Arizona as a junior in interceptions. This year, they were smart. Most teams didn't throw at him because of what he did as a, as a junior. Um, they won the state championship when he was a junior. And um, anyway, Tommy came to camp and one of the more athletic uh, fluid safeties that I've seen in camp in a while. I, I fell in love with the way he plays there. And um, he was one, obviously, who went hard after and got. And uh, anyway, bottom line, this defensive class, I'm super excited about. A lot of great players. Uh, like A-Rod mentioned before, uh, you know, in recruiting, the first thing you got to do is retain your current players. I was happy with uh, the progress of the guys that played for us last year. We retained those guys. They're coming back. Cougar Nation will be excited to know that uh, our best players are still here at BYU. I think our coaching staff did a phenomenal job with just this signing class, with keeping our players here and buying into what we know this uh, is going to look like in the next couple of years. And we're super excited about the future of these recruits and, and where our defense is headed. OK, thank you, coaches. Appreciate that um, the update on the class. Uh, like, like I mentioned earlier, we'll go ahead and ask some questions. If you would address your specific questions to one of the coaches, and then you'll ha have the opportunity to do a follow-up questions, and then we'll move to the next one. So we'll start with uh, Jared Boyd and then Sean Walker. Bonnie, this is for you. I'm sure it will surprise you, a philosophy question coming from me. But how has recruiting philosophy, in, in your opinion, had to evolve over the last couple of years with the Big 12, with the NIL, with uh, the portal, all of these different factors. How, how has your philosophy evolved? Yeah, I mean, recruiting, we have to be innovative and, and to adjust to the times. And so uh, if you're using the, 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 the same form, formula and format as, as you were a couple of years ago, you're already uh, outdated. You know, So we got to stay on top of it. One is understanding the rules and understanding the the opportunities, but but we have to make sure that that falls in line with what we're trying to do as a university and as a football program, the mission of the university for our football program. And uh, so what we're going to do is always going to be unique and different than everyone else. But uh, we also want to be able to adjust and find creative ways to, to enhance and, and see the, the recruiting benefits um, for our recruits. You know, the, the, uh, 
if it's just only about one thing, then, then we're not doing our job. But being able to see uh, how we put all of it together, it's, it's, it's all our coaches, it's our staff, it's our faculty, it's, it's the administration and the athletic department. It's, it's all of that being involved. Uh, I, think we've, I think we've done a great job con connecting everyone into it and having everybody feel like that they're a part of it rather than just completely only about football. And so uh, that's always going to be our pitch, but it's always going to be uh, right in, in alignment with the church and with the, the school and, and with uh, what they want from our football program. inside the program, keeping guys, you know, your, your best players at BYU. Tony, what role does loyalty play now? Because some programs seem to be just chasing after portal guys, other teams taking different approaches. Where does loyalty both for the players to, to the program and from the program to the players, where does that come into play? Well, it's be, got to be about the relationships and then also what's best for the, for the young man. I, I think sometimes we, we, we forget that, that they're – they have needs and they have desires and hearing them out. I, I can say most of the guys are in the portal right now from BYU are looking for more playing time. And, and, and uh, you know, normally when, when we do have guys in the portal, that, that's the number one uh, concern, that they want to play more and they want to get on the field. And we want them to do that too. We want them to be happy. I think uh, I, I speak for all the coaches where we want our players to have great experience here, but we also want them to, to have a great experience on the field. And sometimes – uh, we're just loaded, and sometimes they just have to find a different place to go. But that's just that's just the game. But for the most part, we're trying to keep the guys that produce, and and, and it's not it's not trying to make them feel guilt or shame to, to be attached to us and using the loyalty card. It's just hey, we have to we have to give them reasons to stay. And if there's enough reasons out there for them to leave, and they have to weigh and consider it all, just like the recruits do. And and if we show them that there's just more to us, more in depth with what we are as a program compared to everyone else, then I think we get them. And, and that's why the, it's, it's worked out so so well for us, especially this year. Sean, go ahead, you're up. Yeah, for either Kalani or Jay, um, you, both of you kind of touched on this a little bit. So maybe, I can, maybe we can just elaborate a little bit more. But it, it seemed like there was a pretty significant emphasis in this class on the defensive line, the front, uh, the pass rush, edge rushers that kind of thing. Well, was that sort of a conscious decision to, to really go after that area of the field? Or can you just sort of walk me through kind of what you saw out of your group coming back and, and, and what you see out of that sort of area, I guess, where you where you seem to put a lot of emphasis, again, kind of in the edge brush and, and along the D-line? Go ahead, Jay. Well, it definitely was an emphasis. Um, we should have monster just athletic, nasty D linemen here at BYU. And I think this class is a great start to where we're heading. And we have those guys. I mean, Tyler Batty is one of the best edge rushers in the Big 12 right now. We know that. And we got to continue to bring in guys that get to see how he does it and uh, continue to develop those guys. But it was definitely an emphasis. I love the guys we signed. There's great length and athleticism in this group. And I think Kalani mentioned it uh, earlier on Sports Nation <coughs> that there's some guys here that have growth potentials that could grow into, you know, bigger things. And uh, I, I, I think that that's the key in recruiting is the ability to identify that athletic ability and then be able to slide them forward into positions that are best going to suit them. But we do need to be more disruptive in the D-line. We know that. <laughs> um, he, I think he got an offer that's like 14 or something like that. I don't remember. I can't remember. But he, he's been he's been committed for for a long time, and he finally followed through on that commitment. Just what does that say? Maybe even as a from a non-football perspective, just about being able to kind of stick with a group for as long as he has multiple coaches, that kind of a thing. What's that kind of say about a kid like that? Well, I mean, it says a lot about him and his character and um, his integrity and all those things. In today's world, there's so much noise that these players hear. Uh, to see someone like Down stay true to what he committed to, I thought was huge. And, you know, it's, it's different for every person. For him, he wanted to play at BYU, and he had the opportunity. He stayed true to it. Um, others we were able to get, 
And uh, they once they saw BYU and what was all about, this ended up being the place for them. And I think that that's the key to BYU. There's so much there is to offer here um, that when the, when the players see it, um, it's easy to either keep them committed or flip them when we need to uh, just because of what we can offer. Okay, we'll take questions now from Mitch Harper and Jake Patrick. Yeah. And this is for uh, Coach Roderick. Uh, Coach, you mentioned the roster retention uh, for the offense. What do you credit that, uh, you know, after a season where there were struggles, what, what do you think has been the biggest cause of why these guys want to run it back? I just think, first of all, I think uh, the guys believe in what we're doing. You know, we have a, a lot of guys coming back that have played a lot of football for us. They've been through some ups and downs, but they believe in the culture that Kalani's established here, and I think they believe in what we're doing on offense. And um, and I think those guys, they have a unity, you know, about them. There's a, there's a, a sort of, um, I don't want to know what the word is, but like, for example, that group of wide receivers that have all kind of been together for, for a bit now, I think those guys have something they want to prove next year as a group. You know, And I think we've got some offensive linemen returning that have a chip on their shoulder about something they want to prove. And I think there's a unity there amongst the group offensively that you know, the year didn't go as, as uh, you know, the way we had hoped, and we didn't play the kind of offense that we've been playing the last few years. And I think that those guys have a huge chip on their shoulder to stick together and keep getting better. You noted wide receiver and, and offensive line then on, on that retention piece. Does that mean Keanu Hill, Braden Kime, they're coming back? Yes, yeah, yeah, they're back. Um, and we're going to, uh, I guess I guess to say this now, we're going to, Keanu Hill's going to play tight end this year. We're moving him to tight end. And Braden Kime has, has told us he's coming back, yes. Go ahead, Jake. Yeah, this question is uh, for A-Rod. Just in terms of your quarterback class, you mentioned the fact that Phoenix going on a mission. You got Noah coming in. Do you feel like your room is stocked? Are you still going to be looking for quarterbacks in the portal? Yeah, there's a good chance we'll bring in one quarterback from the portal. Um, in fact, we, we plan to. Uh, the room's pretty full right now, with, but we, we're going to bring in one veteran player, and then we feel like we, if we bring in one veteran player and, and mix that with the guys we have, we'll be set. And this is for Kalani. Kalani, uh, how do you feel about the past, uh, the overall mix of high school, junior college, and portal additions via this via this class so far? Yeah, I feel really good about it. And, and considering what our needs are and what we've done last year, building on that, um, and the most important thing is that they're all a great fit for what we we want to do as a, as a team here. And so um, they came here for the right reasons, and uh, we were able to see that in recruiting. And I'm uh, just really excited to, to have them and their families join our, our family here at BYU Football. And I, th I think was, I mean, there's a lot of potential here and then also a lot of potential to play right away. So um, that, that's the – I think we have to develop guys, but th it's, a, it's a lot easier to develop guys that have uh, – that, that are already cr developed quite, quite uh, a bit in, in high school and, and even in JC. So the mixture of, of talent here, I, I think uh, – We'll still have a few surprises in the next little bit, any time from today till signing day in, in February. But um, I think those are going to be the spots that, that uh, we need and um, that will, will enhance the, and upgrade everything else. But I, I don't want to take away from the players that we have currently on the team. Those guys have done an amazing job. And, and even uh, their approach to the, to the weight room and off-season conditioning, we got an early start on it. And I've been really impressed with the way they're going about it. And kind of just sitting off what A-Rod said, is like there's a, there's a hunger for this team and obviously after the year not being what they wanted it, uh, I, I'm excited about the uh, the approach that they've had, especially seen it the last few weeks. Okay, we'll take questions now from Jay and then Kevin Mills. Yeah, my question's for A-Rod. Uh, Jay Patrick kind of asked about quarterbacks, so uh, I was gonna ask that, but uh, just in general, uh, Aaron, what? What's on your wish list moving forward? You said there's a few more, you know, openings yeah. left. Yeah, we have we have a couple of. Do you, do you want to fill? Okay, we have a couple of offensive line spots we'd still like to fill. Uh, we really really like the group that's coming back, and we're adding a couple of guys at mid year. Uh, that are home from missions as well as um, Iki today that we talked about. So we're not, you know, in a in a. I don't feel like it's a desperate need. We're going to be really smart and patient with how we fill those spots. But we do have a couple of O-line spots. We'd still like to build our depth there a little bit. 
Uh, one guy I will mention is Joe Brown, was a player uh, from a couple of years ago, just got home from his mission. We're putting him on scholarship. Uh, just re-watched re his film while he was while he was gone and felt like he's as good as anybody we're recruiting. Uh, I mean, very impressive, good football player. So he'll be on scholarship. That, that's another guy that I think could be, could be ready to play soon. Um, so we're going to be smart with those spots for the offensive line. And we're, we're well stocked, though, at receiver, tight end, running back right now. Don't see a whole lot of change there uh, moving forward. Go ahead, Kevin. This one's for Aaron. I uh, just wanted to follow up a little bit on Nick. Um, what was the main reason why you wanted to move Keanu to the tight end um, going into this next season? Just uh, playmaking ability at that position. Uh, Keanu has been a he's been a great playmaker for us in his career. This year he struggled a little bit with a uh, uh, an injury to his shin. He had he had dealing with sort of a stress fracture type injury in his shin all season. Slowed him down. The guy's so tough. He kept trying to play every week, and he never really fully got going the way he has in the past. But um, he fights to keep his weight down. I mean, he's, he's uh, 6'4", 225 to 230 pounds on any given day, and he has to fight to keep his weight down. And we just felt like with our depth at wide receiver, why not? Why fight it? Just let yourself get up to 235, 240, and, and, and uh, he's already one of our best blockers on the whole team at any position. So uh, we feel like moving him to tight end just makes perfect sense. That's how I live. Stop, stop fighting. <laughs> Just let it go. <laughs> and then I, I have one for Jay, too. With, you mentioned Ethan Masiata and, and his recruitment. Uh, how much did Sione Buha kind of help in that recruitment, and who was kind of the main recruiter down the stretch um, in his case? Well, uh, that Sione was huge in recruiting and is huge. Um, he, there's a big reason why both Kalani and I and A-Rod wanted him here. He's a phenomenal recruiter, does a great job getting close to the families. Uh, there was already a previous relationship there with the family. Uh, and then Coach Papinga did a phenomenal job of just, uh, you know, adding that relationship to the mix. So uh, we're super excited about him. We're excited about that family coming here to BYU. And, and that's not always an easy thing. I hope everyone's considerate to that on both sides of this thing. That's not always an easy deal. People got to do what they feel is best for them. We're grateful for them coming here, and uh, we believe he's going to be a phenomenal player for us. Looks like we've got time for uh, one more question each from uh, Jared, then Mitch, and Jake. Just curious, just as far as um, this is kind of for, uh, for the entire staff, so Kwani, I guess it's directed direct at you. The staff didn't change a lot. We haven't had a chance to talk about some of the staff decisions. But what benefit or drawback does that have when, with recruiting when you're able to keep the majority of the staff the same year over year? I, I think just going off of what Jay said when he's talking about, the, you know, Coach Papinka and Poch, uh, Coach Boha and recruiting, that, that's the whole entire coaching staff and then the recruiting department. So, But the, the, the main reason, and, and I'll say it because they won't talk about themselves, but is Jay Hill and Aaron Roderick. That, that's the main reason. These are, these are the two best recruiters I've been with. I've been with them my entire I've seen them work. We, we started off together back when we were, um, before I decided to let it go and just let my weight go. But we were all together doing that stuff and, and, and enjoying uh, the, the battles and recruiting. And it's been a lot of fun to see Jay do his thing. It's been a lot of fun to see A-Rod do his thing. And uh, I can say the, these guys do an amazing job at evaluating people. Look at, look at the history that they have in, in, in terms of recruiting. Look at what they've done as, as individuals in recruiting. And it's just every position, too. So I'm very fortunate that I have uh, two great coordinators that know how to recruit, but also know how to run a defense and run an offense. Uh, these guys can, obviously, you know, that these guys are great leaders. And so it all starts there. Uh, they, I, needed, I needed help in, in terms of winning the recruiting battles. And, and, and I went to two guys that I know can recruit their butts off, and and them combined with the staff, I, I have no no concerns if I can get these guys to to, to continue to do what I've seen them do for decades now. Uh, we're we're going to be in a good spot. So that evaluating, developing, they they, they do a, an amazing job at all of it, and uh, you know, so I'm I'm really fortunate to have these coordinators with me. Along those same lines, Kalani, how critical is it for the program to succeed in the Big Twelve in the future? Continue having 
classes that feature a lot of recruiting battles and get landing guys that have kind of a long list of power conference offers. But yeah, and you look at the the way that we recruit and how unique it is and how different. I mean, everyone's going to the, the to the one thing that they can try to sell the most, and that's that's the money. We we have way more than that. There's 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 way more layers than that here, uh, and 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 that's not the focus. We're never going to be a program focused on on money as the attraction. But the attraction is all. You notice that everything that I've mentioned from the beginning to the opening statement to now is about people, and that's our currency. And so uh, we have enough to take care of, of our players here. Uh, we, we also know that there's way more valuable things than just cash. The, 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 the value of, of mentoring and ma the value of, of leadership and camaraderie, fellowship, uh, to, to build yourself spiritually, physically, and mentally, uh, we have all those things. And so when you, when you look at that, we are able to highlight it and not just be about one thing, uh, you know, I, I, that, I, that's the challenge is that when, when, you, when you talk about money, that's all it becomes about, and that's not what we're ever going to do. We will focus on the spirit first, go from there, and build a program the right way. We do things the right way. The, uh, the outcome and, and part of the, the, the product will be, will be the wins, and that will get us where we need to be. Obviously, uh, we have some really cool, good things going. We still have some work to do. Uh, we know that, but we're going to do it with a positive uh, a positive um, outlook, and we're going to do it with a lot of optimism and excitement and energy. We'll focus on that, be best versions of ourselves, and so that we can get the best program out there when we when we take the field in 2024. I guess this one's directed at Kwani as well, but Kwani, oh, I might just delegate it. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <coughs> you guys didn't make the bowl game this year, so give you extra time to focus in on recruiting. How much of a difference did that make for you guys, if at all? You know what? Uh, I have a coaching staff that recruits hard all the time. It, it had nothing to do with just the last the last few weeks. These guys have been on it from the beginning. They don't rest. It, it, the recruiting is every day for the staff. Uh, I'm and this is not just the coaches, but our entire support staff. Everybody in this building, whether you go from the uh, the, the support staff to the recruiting staff to the the trainers to the the sports medicine department to the to the sports science the weight room. Uh, nutrition, all that stuff. Everybody's bought into what we do, and that's recruiting. Everybody works together. We all do it. This is not about a, a one-person job. It's not. A, it's not about the head coach. So it's about all of us doing it together. And I think that's attract that attracts a lot of recruits, the right right recruits to our program. All right. Thanks everybody for joining us today, Kwani and Aaron and Jay. Thank you so much for spending some time. We also got a quick uh, cameo high five from Tom in there. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah, thanks, happy holidays. Go Kooks. Thank you. Yeah, happy holidays, you guys. Merry Christmas.